Mexico. Mexico. So, the big news, the biggest trending news that's happening across the board in the United States of the Americas is Mexico. Mexico. Mexico has recently elected a new president. This president just so happens to be the first woman president of Mexico, and she just so happened to be Jewish, all right? So we're going to deep dive into this, and then I'm going to also cover something that a lot of the news outlets aren't covering, and that there is a lot of Mexicans inside of the United States of America that was able to vote for the president of Mexico. <laughs> Make sure y'all hit a like for the algorithm, subscribe to the channel, and turn on your notifications. We're going to talk about female leadership today. This morning, Mexico electing the first woman president and first Jewish president in its 200-year history. Claudia Sheinbaum, a close ally of Mexico's current president, Andres Manuel López Obrador, declaring victory overnight. The election also happening across the U.S., with 20 Mexican consulates allowing voters to cast ballots. As a young adult, it is really exciting to come vote for my own country. In Mexico, some voters waiting out. Let me rewind that for y'all, because we're going to cover that a little bit more extensively. I'm going to rewind that. I want y'all to know what was going on. All right? I don't want y'all to be confused. Listen. Mexican consulates allowing voters to cast ballots. You are declaring victory overnight. The election also happening across the U.S. with 20... The election was also happening across the U.S. The election was also happening across the U.S. Now, I was not familiar with this. This is the first time that I've ever heard of this. I was not aware that you could be here in the United States of America. Thank you for the cash app. I appreciate you. I was not aware that you could be in the United States of America, legally and illegally, and still cast votes for the Mexican president. I was, I was blown away. When I started deep diving, because over the weekend, what I had the opportunity to do was deep dive to better understand exactly who this woman is, right? So I wanted to learn all about her. Uh, I learned about how she was the mayor over in Mexico City, how she eliminated crime, not eliminated it, but basically, you know, lowered the amount of violent crimes that was happening in the city by double digit gains and some of the things that she learned. And what I found out was that a lot of what she learned was actually coming over here to visit the United States of America to take a bi level approach to what crime was and how to solve for it. Right. But I was not aware. I did not know that you can vote for a Mexican president while here in the United States of America, and they actually have voting places for you to do so, especially over in Seattle. We're going to get to that shortly. Let's continue. Mexican consulates allowing voters to cast ballots. As a young adult, it is really exciting to come vote for my own country. In Mexico, some voters waiting hours at polling locations. I think it's a necessary change, and it's a good sign of progress as a society. Shamebone is an academic who shared a Nobel Peace Prize for her work on climate change. And it's the growing power and violence of criminal organizations that are expected to be her greatest challenge. Hundreds have been killed at campaign events, including dozens of candidates. Mexico's drug cartels and gangs are thought to be behind the attacks. 20 years ago, Mexican drug cartels were just shipping drugs to the U.S. Now they are doing businesses locally and extorting people and government, so they need to have a political base, and elections are the opportunity to increase the control. Criminal organizations are also profiting from the smuggling of migrants to the U.S., with thousands arriving daily through Mexico's southern border. The immigration crisis, a major issue for U.S. voters this November, and Shamebaum will become America's crucial partner to avoid another surge at the border. And one of the things to watch moving forward is what type of relationship Chainbaum will have with either President Biden or Donald Trump, depending on who wins the U.S. election. They will have to negotiate a lot of things together. She's also different than the past Mexican president, presidents because she speaks fluent English, so she could be a lot more relevant with U.S. audiences. Let's keep in mind that Mexico shares a large border with the U.S., but is also its largest trading partner. Craig? All right. Go out, Venegas. So... Basically, this woman, 
um, is largely famous for winning the Nobel Peace Prize, uh, also being able to speak multiple different languages, including English, and for also studying here in the United States of America how it is that we deal with crime. Now, I don't know how that's a benefit to Mexico because I'm not really sure if she's familiar exactly what the results are uh, in a lot of these liberal cities where she's taking her policies from. But apparently a lot of it has been working and I'm going to be tapping and I'm going to be reading that cash app shortly. A apparently a lot of it has been working because over in Mexico City, they say that crime has dropped significantly as a result of her leadership. So here's my question as we continue to navigate through understanding exactly who this woman is and why she's so significant to the Mexican people, uh, including whether or not she's going to tackle crime from the cartels. And in addition to that, whether or not she can implement the same policies all across the every single smaller city, uh, in addition to Mexico City, if she can tackle crime and also stem what's happening at our borders. Uh, let's continue. All right, we're going to go now to Mexico, where voters have just elected the country's very first female president. Claudia Sheinbaum was the hand-picked candidate to succeed the, succeed the current president amid tensions with the U.S., of course, over those border crossings. Enrique Acevedo is in Mexico City for us with more on the election that was heavily overshadowed by violence. Celebrations in the street of Mexico City overnight to usher in president-elect Claudia Sheinbaum. On Sunday, thousands line up in the sweltering heat, some even camping out overnight, to vote for the 61-year-old former climate scientist. You know what this reminds me of? This reminds me of when Obama got elected president. It absolutely reminds me of when Obama got elected president because it, it reeks of the same structure and foundation which people are so tired of suffering through what it is that they've been going through over in mexico especially with, reg with regard to crime because that's largely the platform that she ran on even though she's regarded as a climate scientist right and her intelligence is heralded and it should be heralded and celebrated because i'm not going to take anything away from somebody just because they're a woman but more importantly it the, the, the campaign by which she ran on is very similar to that of Obama's, which is that of hope. And so people are always looking for, in my opinion, radical change when things become so bad, regardless of whether or not you're black, white, women, men, they want change completely. It's one of the reasons why we then got Trump in 2016, because people were so sick of what they had been enduring through that they were willing to go completely left and I'm not saying that this is a good thing or a bad thing. They were they were willing to go completely outside of what our norm is because our norm had had been basically inept for so long that people were looking for something different and hope. In my opinion, what they got in Trump up until 2020, which we can debate whether or not it was intentional or not, but we're not going to get into that. What they got from Trump for the first three and a half years, basically, is prosperity, growth, less taxes, uh, record low unemployment, everybody was eating, doing well, nobody was complaining on the wars, troops was getting sent home, all of this stuff. And so you got almost three and a half years of prosperity and growth until obviously election year in which we all get distracted. And then all of a sudden it became orange man bad, a lot of protests, George Floyd, all of this stuff, right? And so now people are realizing in a lot of senses like, hey, man, maybe we had it a little bit better than we thought that we did considering everything that we're going through now and going back to the establishment was obviously not necessarily the right thing to do in a lot of people's minds. But this kind of similarly gives me that same vibe as far as why it is that we elected President Obama, former President Barack Obama in 2008. <laughs> It's important for you to show your daughter that uh -huh. she can be president, that ella puede ser presidenta también. And it incentivizes a future to where women are now part of the representation worldwide of what leadership is supposed to be looking like, especially in a president. Let me tell you something, bro. Before we get over into uh, them voting for the president here inside of the United States of America, over in Mexico, it's coming. It's coming faster than you can ever imagine. I would imagine that we get a female president within the next 12 years. Max. Max, it's going to take 12 years. 
I listen, listen. This is my prediction. I believe, hopefully, I live to see the day that I that I that my prediction is right. Do I think that it's going to make sense for the United States of America? Probably not. But I'm telling you, this is happening worldwide. It's already happened in a lot of other places. But this is setting the precedent of what's going to happen inside of the United States of America. We will have a female president within the next 12 years. I'm telling you. Mark my words. I'm always right about these things. Within the next 12 years, it is happening. It is happening. The crux of what's swinging the elections in the first place has already been women, especially black women. Now, if you can get a woman of color, because it ain't going to be no white woman. You can forget it. Whoever the president of the United States is, when it becomes a woman, I do not think that it's going to be a white woman at all. At all. President, first, first woman president of the United States is going to have to be a diversity, equity, and inclusion pick, too. It's not going to be a white woman at all. Let me, see, look, let me look at something really quickly. I just want to see something. I just want to look at something. Nope. Nope, it's not going to be a white woman at all. You can forget it. Let's continue. But while Shane Baum brings a new face to the presidency, will it be a new era for Mexico? The president-elect campaigned on social welfare policies that boosted broad support for her predecessor and political mentor, current president Andrés Manuel López Obrador. But one of the biggest issues remains security and violence. Mexico has seen a 150% uptick in violence, read that super chat with 37 shortly. candidates assassinated during the election cycle, the murders linked to cartels who control much of the drug trade in the U.S. For the first time, uh, it kind of like makes sense for criminal organizations to try to control local governance. They are targeting mayors, right? And mayors are in charge of local police. And while immigration remains a lightning rod in American politics, it's a topic most Mexican candidates avoided. Let me uh, go into the actual election process because this is something that in my research I started to find out for myself. And maybe you guys wasn't familiar with it, but I didn't know that you can vote for Mexican presidents here in the United States of America. That's right, Sebastian. Nearly 700,000 Mexican citizens living in other countries are eligible or are registered rather to vote. But historically, only a small percentage of them actually have. But today, for the first time ever, they could cast their ballot in person for Mexico's presidential election. And they did so right here in Seattle. Viva Mexico! Viva! So it is a big deal to be able to cast our vote so our cities will be safer. This was one of... But, I, but you live here in the United States of America. I don't understand how you're saying... Okay, this is what I'm trying to understand. Because I'm, I'm, I'm aware, finally, that this is a thing. And how are you able to legally and illegally say that that's your city, but you're still here while you're sending money over there? And you're able to vote from here for whatever happens over there. Just 20 consular offices in the U.S. where Mexican citizens living abroad could vote in person. For Oregon, Washington, and Canada also. That's why there are so many people around here. It took forever. Yeah, we were here for six hours. One father and daughter duo waited in line for 10 hours in the rain. But for them, it's worth it. Everybody just wants to have peace in, in here. Her dad cast his ballot in hopes of electing a president who can end Mexico's cartel violence. He lost three brothers and my mom because of that, the violence, and they got like assass assassinated like of all those things. So he thinks it's very important for a good president to take over. She and others I heard from hope that president either way is going to be a woman will bring some positive change to the country it won't just be like all men that it's going to be a woman it's going to be a change and everything the mentality of western culture has literally affected and infected every single thing that happens across 
uh, the world. Like, it's just a thing. Diversity, equity, and inclusion, counting by numbers, identity politics, gender-based policies, it's all a real thing, man. How does that make you feel? Excited. I get men do the work and stuff like that, but sometimes us women like to also do the work and not like only stay at home and do stuff like that. Yeah, women are great leaders. Yeah. <laughs> do you feel you see how they grooming y'all and indoctrinating y'all and preparing y'all to move the way that y'all gonna be moving? Like you want, would want to be the president one day? Yeah. <laughs> I don't see why not. <laughs> I heard somebody one time say, uh, actually it was on Randy's show that, that actually shows on my channel. Make sure y'all check that out. A new episode basically every Tuesday. I heard somebody say that active fathers create the women that ultimately act like this within our society. Do y'all think that that's true? Active fathers ultimately create the, the most feminist women and the ones that are operating like this inside of our society. Do y'all think that that's true? Just a, just a question. I'm just curious. Do y'all think that this is real? Active fathers ultimately create the environment by which these young girls come up and grow up to be the leaders within our culture and in our society.